So today we're gonna make some stuffed acorn squash. This is a beautifully delicious dish and easy to make. It's also relatively healthy. A lot of low glycemic index carbs, lots of fiber. So I'm actually gonna double the recipe this because I'm gonna be cooking for my family as well. So call for two acorn squashes and go ahead and cut them in half. If I can grip. There's one. Opa. And go ahead and scoop out the seeds. I'm gonna try and get rid of the stringy stuff because that's not fun to eat. As the question was posed, can you roast these? Probably. We'll probably try it. We actually roast the acorn squash seeds, but we'll find out. You'll be surprised how delicious this dish is. Remember the first time I tried it? I was like, oh, acorn squash with some stuff inside. And me try like, oh, that's actually really good. Now we have these carved, we're gonna go ahead. And the ones that don't sit straight, go ahead and I'm gonna cut a piece off the top. So you lay flat. Boom, boom. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna take a pan and put them face down. This pan is a lot smaller than I thought it was. This Tetris is not fit well. There we go. There's one. I don't have enough space. So we'll leave one up. And we're just gonna fill this about a quarter inch of water. So the reason we're putting water in these is that when we put these in the oven, it kind of broils almost with the water. So we'll make it nice and soft. So take these and cover with aluminum foil. Make a nice little happy tent for them to chill out in. Oh, I just spilled water everywhere. These are gonna go into the 450 degree oven for anywhere between 25 and 30 minutes until they're tender, soft, and fork. So while the oven is preheating, we're gonna go ahead and cut some chorizo, because well, we need that. Actually, no, back that up. Let me get the quinoa ready first. So I have a cup of quinoa here that I have rinsed out already. I'm gonna add that to our pot. Don't ever spill quinoa, because it's like a million ants. Nobody likes ants. We're gonna add a cup and a half of water. Let's rinse this out. Salt. As I say in the islands, some pepper. I'm gonna put this on the stove top to boil. So once this starts to boil, we're gonna go ahead and just drop it to the simmer and cover it with our lid. For some reason I set my oven to 480. Put that 450. Oh, it's hot. There goes two. So this is boiling, so we're gonna go ahead and cover it. Drop it to a simmer, let that cook for 10 minutes. So I somehow forgot to press record. So I basically took the chorizos, about three ounces, but I'm doubling for this, so I'm using six ounces. I basically cut it in half, took the, the, the uh, I took the casing off and then just cut it into small little cubes because we're gonna put it with the quinoa. Now, taking the casing off is not required, but it makes it a lot easier to eat. Trust me, it's not as chewy and your guests will enjoy it a lot better. So let's check on our quinoa. Ooh, this quinoa is good. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the heat off and take it off the stove. So we're gonna go ahead and just dump this into our chorizo. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this. Get that chorizo get nice and warm already. Kind of get that nice color in there. So let's set this aside. We're also gonna need a half or a quarter cup of parsley, but I'm like I said, since I'm making double, I'm gonna use half a cup. Now you want flat leaf parsley. This is Italian parsley, but it's close enough. Cause I didn't go to the store. Just shave it off. It's like you're pruning a tree. Basically what it is. You don't want 
branches in there though. Oh, it smells so aromatic. This is gonna go into our mixture. Boop. We're also gonna add some manchego cheese. Unfortunately, my dad does not like cheese, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and set some aside. Because he eats pizza, but he doesn't eat cheese. Explain that one to me. That yeah, should be sufficient. Set this aside. Let's just cut some cheese. Technically, you're supposed to put about four ounces for two acorns. So we're going to cut probably around eight ounces of cheese. Great, this. Your cutting board is your workspace. It's your workbench. You should call it your work board. It's like fighting a bear. Now, if you don't have manchego cheese, you can use, use cheddar. It's a nice, strong cheese to use in this recipe. Look at that. And this, we'll bring our mixture back, and we're gonna add it in there. Let's mix it up. Add some more. And add some more. Now, you don't need to add any salt to this because the chorizo is already salty. It's a cured meat, so it's very high in salt. So be careful of that, be cognizant of that. Don't be loading it up with salt without trying it at least first. But I don't need to try it because I know it's good. It's a good parmesan, two years old, eh? So I'm gonna go ahead and line this. Bacon cheese, some aluminum foil. So it doesn't stick. Careful with the steam. Yeah, see, tender. Very nice. Oh, oh. Too tender? Maybe. Oh! Ah! Voila. So go ahead and make this the cheeseless one. I also like to grate a little parmigiano across the top there. Actually, let me get the cheese grater. This will give it a nice crust on the top. So this is gonna go back in the oven for anywhere between eight to 10 minutes, basically gonna let the cheese melt and let the parmesan get nice and crusty. So good, such a perfectly balanced dish between the savory, salty, the sweet. If you don't like acorn squash, this is a dish to try. It's unbelievable, it's nutritious, and it's it's just so well balanced. Like I said, you don't need salt because the chorizo really comes through. Oh, and the cheese just makes it unbelievable. That manche was top notch. My name is Dennis with Black Tie Kitchen. Follow us at blacktiekitchen.com across all social media, Black Tie Kitchen. Until next time, let us know down below in the comments what you do with your stuffed acorn squash. Remember, until next time, stay hungry.
got a little stuck.